Super producer Steve Lillywhite says Elton John and Paul McCartney have released too many albums. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Both Paul and Elton have released about 30 solo albums. Well, Wings was not officially solo Paul McCartney, but he was really at the wheel for those. So I'm going to say that. And even though neither artists sell as well as they did in the 70s, their heyday as solo artists, they obviously still have something to say. Steve Lillywhite does not agree. While he was appearing on the Music's Latest Producer Series podcast, he said, I'm a big believer in artists that don't clog up the airways with new music just because they think they must release a new album. I love Paul McCartney. I love Elton John. I think they've made too many albums. Someone like Billy Joel, who I'm a big fan of, is a good songwriter. He's not made an album in 20 years excluding the classical stuff because he really hasn't thought of what he wants to say. He adds, if Billy Joel made a new album, I'd go, that's going to be interesting because he feels he has something to say now. Paul McCartney, I don't trust. Elton John, I don't trust. They feel like they want to make a new album because they have to make a new album. Lily White has worked with some of the big ones, Chris Cornell, Counting Crows, Crowded House, Dave Matthews Band, Peter Gabriel, The Killers, The Stones, Simple Minds, U2, XTC, among others. Elton John's last studio album was Wonderful Crazy Night in 2016. McCartney's was simply called New in 2013, and he's working on a new one now. There are many phases of both of these artists, but I'll talk about Elton John. I'm a huge Elton John fan, and and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that I like all the stages. Do I wish Elton on Wonderful Crazy Night sounded and still had that high, high voice that he had in the 70s? Of course I do. I also wish I had the hair I had in the 70s, but that ain't going to happen. I do the best with what I've got, and Elton John's doing the same thing. And maybe the Elton John that you heard on The Union with Leon Russell or Diving Board or Wonderful Crazy Night, the last few from Elton, was not that Captain Fantastic from the 70s that you remembered. That's hard for some people. I get that. I look at Elton John as having so many stages, though. The Paul Buckmaster symphonic years. Then he became a pure pop rock artist. More pop. Then he kind of lost it. I almost jumped off ship when I heard Little Genie, even though I like 21 and 33. You could see he started digging a little deeper with the Fox and Jump Up. And even after that, when he was fighting back, leading up to live with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra, when he said many times that's his low point, I still love that album because it brought me back to Symphony to Paul Buckmaster, which I really appreciated. And when he became more of um, almost an Americana soul bluesy type artist, he still sounded like Elton John to me. The voice was lower, but I really appreciated. I reviewed Wonderful Crazy Night and Diving Board on my other channel, Aircom Radio Network, and I really loved them. I remember when I became a professional writer in the early 90s, I started writing and actually getting paid to write about music in Vancouver, Canada. I was always really excited when I was writing about Elton John. And when Billy Joel said that Elton John should have quit making music a long time ago, I was kind of offended by that because I still find great value in Elton John music. And not as much with Paul McCartney, but I'm always curious on what he's up to. He's a Beatle. He's Paul McCartney. But as always, what do you think? Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. We'd appreciate that. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Mm -hmm.